Hello everybody and welcome to Forest Frontiers on Roller Coaster Tycoon 1. This is one of the first scenarios in Roller Coaster Tycoon um, and this is the CD version of the game. So we're not on Steam and it's not open RCT2 or even Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. This is the OG Roller Coaster Tycoon game. Um, I'm using trainers to enable all rides and have unlimited money um, and this is because uh, scenarios seem to be a little bit restricting on what you can build uh, because obviously you have objectives to fill and I'm very much a builder. Uh, I have completed all the scenarios in Relicus Tycoon 1 um, a long time ago. I've been playing this for about five years um, so I I know how to uh, how to build uh, how to beat the game, um, but I'd much rather spend my time building in the game now. Uh, it's much more interesting, um, both for you and for me. Um, so I'm putting in a wooden twister roller coaster at the moment, um, and I have a I have a set of rules in my head when building parks. Um, these are sort of like, these are crazy unbroken rules. I'm sure everybody at home um, looking at this also has their own rules of how they like their parks to look and feel. Um, and for some reason, I've broken um, one of my rules already, which is to not have a roller coaster smack bang right there at the park entrance. It's, I think it's better to have coasters a little bit further in um, and have gentler rides and have all your shops and your kiosks etc at the front so I'm not sure why I'm not sure why I did that it's uh, you know the rules in my head they're, they're sort of unbreakable yet I seem to be I seem to break them quite a few times whilst whilst playing Roller Coaster Tycoon um, it's sort of I don't know how to explain it obsessive obsessively compulsive about certain things um, I do believe I also break a second rule on the same coaster and the second rule is to uh, never have a diagonal track because some some camera angles they they look a bit weird I think um, I think I'm about to do the diagonal track in a second I think it looks weird to have to, to look at that angle and to see the coaster um, trains going along it. Um, just a small thing, just a small thing. I mean, you guys might may like using diagonals. Um, so this is obviously Forest Frontiers. Um, this is the one that you get to the uh, to talk to do the tutorial in the auto tutorial, which I thought was really fun. Um, it's one of the first things I did. Um, and how I learnt to to play Roller Coaster Tycoon, um, and I think someone mentioned, I'm not sure who, that this was one of the most beloved scenarios because it's one of the first ones everyone plays. This and Diamond Heights, of course. Uh, here, here's that little diagonal bit that I'm not not too keen on. Yeah, this and the uh, um, Diamond Heights seem to be synonymous. Um, the most with Roller Coaster Tycoon. Um, it's, a, it's a very easy scenario. Um, you don't have much space to fill, which is sometimes I, I quite prefer that. I think if you're given too much space, you, you tend to run out of ideas. Whereas um, if you're given a smaller space, you have to think more creatively about fitting rides in. Um, at the moment, I think while I while I was building this, I wasn't very keen on this roller coaster. Um, but as soon as I started to do a little landscaping, do a little theming, it kind of worked out. Um, you'll notice I'm using ground to build buildings in this, and that's because, of course, Roller Coaster Tycoon One didn't allow you to stack. Uh, scenery objects to make uh, proper buildings so you're going to see a lot of um, buildings made of 
dirt and then given a sort of a skin of wood or, or however they um, they want to phrase it. Um, but I think that's what gives my parks sort of their je ne sais quoi, shall I say? Um, because not many people are actually using dirt to create their buildings. Ah, now here, this is another trait, um, another little rule of thumb for when I'm building. If, if an area is a little bit complicated like that, where I have a curve coming out of the station and going into the ground, and then I have another track going above it, that, that's quite hard to theme. So what I've done there is I've, I've pulled up the dirt to make sort of jagged rocks. I'm not sure if you... I, I, I'm pretty sure I saw in future versions of the game, maybe RCT2, that you can use actual rock props to, to make an area kind of rocky. But of course we don't have that here. <clears throat> so this is what I've used. Um, a little critique perhaps about wooden roller coasters and that is when sometimes when they go over each other the wooden um, structure uh, the support beams they sometimes disappear in kind of a, a peculiar way um, obviously they need to make room for the coaster to travel underneath it but I kind of wish I kind of wish uh, aesthetically it looked a little bit better I'm not quite sure how I want Rodicus Tycoon to achieve that. I mean, it's obviously too late now because this is a what 25, 20, 25 year old game. Um, but sometimes, sometimes when the when the tracks cross over each other, particularly particularly if it's a curve, then it kind of looks a little bit odd. Still, I think it's the I, I although I will nitpick here and there. I think it's probably as close to perfect of a game um, that you can get. I mean, it's it's visually pleasing. It's um, super addictive, creating things, and uh, um, I just love it. Oh, thank God for Chris Sawyer and his, uh, his brilliant mind. Um, so here I'm putting in a cube path. It's, um, it's a little bit plain, a little bit plain Jane um, in this scenario. I think um, I was sort of okay. This is the tutorial scenario. I'm also sort of, I guess you could say, I'm using this as a tutorial just to get up to speed, just to get my flow going, um, sort of understand what I want to create uh, for future parks. Um, so in the future, my my cues get a little bit better. They get a little bit more interesting, I think. Uh, just added some more jagged rocks there. Um, I'm actually I'm suffering from a little bit of COVID at the moment, so if you hear me sniffing or coughing, I'm I'm desperate to have a cough right now. Then I do apologise. Um, I I've tested negative, but there is a persistent cough. In fact, I'm going to cough right now. <coughs> I do beg your pardon. Um, so what we're doing now is I like to I like to squeeze rides into every nook and cranny. I'm one of these people who I can't I can't sort of leave areas bare. It's almost it's almost a curse really because I go over and over the park uh, over the parks and if I see something that's bare I just have to I have to add something to it. So quite often you'll see trees filling up areas and um, areas being quite overcrowded with rides and paths and and all sorts. Uh, I don't use too much theming as in sort of props. Um, I tend to I tend to just let the park develop um, and it's usually trees and plants that make up the majority of my theming. Um, here I'm just I'm just sort of trying to get the paths through. Guess tend to get lost quite easily um, in RCT1. So pathfinding, I think it, I think pathfinding improved dramatically in um, RCT2 because obviously you can use multiple paths. You can have um, 
triple quadruple paths and they will still find their way um, so it's a little bit basic here in RCT1 so you have to be quite careful and make sure that there's no sort of dead ends and people can get through okay um, here I'm adding a double carousel um, I first saw I saw someone last year I forget the name of the user but he he made a double carousel like this and I thought it was really great um, and this came off the back of me coming um, coming home from Japan where I visited Disney Sea and they had a double carousel there or was it or was it Disneyland next door I'm not sure or one or the other had a double carousel and it was absolutely magical um, and and the, the top deck of course was the most popular um, and it just looked great and the great thing about this is you can get two rides on one plot so I thought it was uh, I thought it was a, a genius um, a genius move for someone to do to do this and um, I think I have implicated this in a couple of my part implicated this in a couple of my parks um, so we I like to sort of um, like I said do the groundwork um, in place of buildings and um, and color them and uh, that tends to be my my MMO um, for all my parks because obviously I can't make the build I can't stack the scenery to make the buildings because you know this is the original on disc um, version of Roller Coaster Tycoon um, it's a little difficult getting the paths in here but it all works out in the end because of course the bottom carousel um, is on the ground floor and easy peasy to get your entrance and exits in um, but the top carousel a little bit trickier I didn't really think that through but I managed to squeeze it in and I don't think it looks too bad until I add these railings which I think are a bit too garish um, and a little bit over the top but I do believe later on you will see me remove them or perhaps I'll do a clever edit and they just they just pop out of existence. Um, if ever you've if any of you have ever had to delete railings one by one, oh boy, what a chore. Um, you'll know my pain. So now we're going on to the second video. Um, and I believe here we're going to work on the middle. Now, initially I thought, oh damn, um, I've left this middle part. It's, it's going to really bother me. I wish I could do something with it. But of course I can. So I've, I've made a, I'll make a path going in. And this is where all my smaller rides are, are going to go. So normally I would put smaller rides at the very front. But for some reason I've put this whopping great big... Um, wooden roller coaster there for some reason I'm not sure why um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start filling in um, the middle with a couple of little rides um, and obviously I, I, another one of my MMOs is to is to place trees and plants everywhere trying to match what's outside the park so it's lovely nice and co cohesant um, so I'm going to put Okay, let's have a look what am I putting in? Putting in a Ferris wheel. I really love Ferris wheels in RCT. I think they're I think they're so sweet looking. The only problem is when you zoom out, um, it kind of goes a bit janky. Almost as if it's gonna fall apart when it's moving. It's really strange. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on there. I do believe they have fixed that in future versions um, in RCT2 onwards. Um, RCT2 seem like they have more more frames in the animations, so all the animations are a little bit smoother. Um, I could be wrong. I'm not. I, I'm not the wisest when it comes to technical aspects um, of the game. I'll leave that to people like uh, Marcel Voss, um, that crazy guy who. who keeps experimenting with all kinds of things um, talking of which I believe he did a video where he beat this scenario by placing just a single carousel so that's kind of amazing isn't it um, I think he's <laughs> I think he's bonkers I think he's bonkers and incredible 
Um, so now I'm just tinkering with colours and names, I'm guessing. Um, and I could tinker with colours and names for, for just forever. Forever. I'm not so good at naming things. Um, I do believe uh, colours have an effect on the park. I think you can get a, a reward, maybe, if you use some of the more crazier colours, some of the brighter colours. Um, a certain amount of, of rides or roller coasters have to have these, what they consider, you know, sort of um, bright colours, and then you get a special reward. But the names, fortunately, the names, the names don't really matter because um, guests do not care. You could literally, you could literally call one of the rides. If you get on this ride, you will die and you will have a massive queue for it. <laughs> They're all paying to go on this uh, ominous ride. Um, so fortunately, no matter how bad my names are, um, it has no bearing um, on the guests or the park. Um, here, I'm, I've am i decided to buy some land. I think what I'm gonna put in here is, um, I think I, I'm gonna put some water in first. Um, thinking i think in my my thought process is i think it would look good to have a small little little uh, um, body of water here but then i quickly change my mind and turn it into a river rapids um and to somehow entwine it with the double carousel which actually sounds kind of crazy because the double carousel is already quite a tight area um I mean, I have the option here to buy more land, but I don't think I do. Maybe a tiny bit just to fit the um, to fit the station in. No, no, I'm going straight in. Um, so this park was made a couple of years ago, so I'm looking at this with kind of fresh eyes. Um, another ah, see now here another little rule of mine in my head. One of these unbreakable city rules is when a river rapid passes through a building uh, where it, where the river rapids goes in and out of the building, um, it has to have waterfalls. Um, I just think, I just think aesthetically it looks, it looks so much more pleasing. Um, and when it, when it's not, when you don't have the waterfall, it kind of looks, I don't know, the, the, the hole, that it goes in, I think is too short. Um, it just looks too short. Sounds a bit odd, doesn't it? For the um, for the ride to go through. And I know um, in R open RCT, um, they've really changed the River Rapids, and I think they work much better. But this is this is what I've got to work with. Just a lovely thin. Um, river rapid snake like river rapid um and i still think it works i mean it's it is still a very satisfying ride very popular with the guests <coughs> excuse me um and it doesn't really matter sort of how long or short the ride is um it still drums up a lot of interest you kind of have to be you kind of have to be a little bit careful about the length, actually, because guests complain about it, um, about being on rides too long. And this is this this and the um, this the log flume and the large um, the large log flume log flume. I can't remember what it's called now. Um, they they really do complain about <laughs> about being on it too long, which is crazy to me because actually I think in real life. A long sort of water ride is exactly what you want, I think. I never really understood why the guests complain so much about them. I think I think the longer the water ride in real life, the better. Um, so now I'm just sort of building up the area, putting putting back the um, putting back the land and uh, making sort of sculptural decisions. Um, to make it a bit, a bit more cohesive, uh, perhaps with the um, the double carousel. Um, I think it probably makes sense if I did turn it all white 
uh, and sort of pristine. I'm sure that's what I do. Again, like I said, I haven't seen this for such a long time. Um, I mean, it makes sense to keep that area sort of a, a, a white sort of marble looking area. Um, I think uh, I think what annoys me here is the gaps between where the the turns of the um, river rapids are. Um, when you put water there as well, it doesn't quite gel together correctly. So what I've done is I've, I've removed the water from that little middle bit and filled it with jagged rocks. I think that works better. Um, it's a, it's a shame, really, because oh no, I'm not gonna. Oh no, I'm putting in more of those railings. <laughs> Just thinking of all the work I have to do to undo it all. Um, yeah, I think it works well. I think it works. Uh, I think it works quite nicely. Um, uh, the jagged rocks with a with a ri river rapids because you you kind of it, it's quite difficult to. You know, you need hills and bumps in a river rapids, but going uphill on these water rides takes forever. So although it's quite flat, apart from that one lift hill um, and going back down again, although it's quite flat, um, I think it makes up for it um, with the uh, with the trees and the, and the jagged rocks. Um, and I think it looks quite good. I think overall it was a, it was a successful build. So I'm just going over everything and adding more. You'll see when I'm placing trees, you uh, the, the message saying, oh, you cannot place this here comes up quite often because I'm ferociously clicking, trying to fill up every spot. Um, it's like, it's almost, <laughs> it's almost obsessive. It's almost, it's almost silly really how much I fill up um, the spaces. So here I go adding the roof. Uh, giving it a nice slope on either side. Um, I was quite surprised to read some comments on my on my videos that people haven't seen that before, haven't haven't used a ground to make buildings before. Um, I suppose because I'm being a little bit old school, maybe um, in the day about back how old is this game? Twenty twenty five years. Um, I'm guessing this is how people used to do it. This is this is the technique that all the original Rollercoaster Tycoon players used to use, which is to build up the land. Um, I, I am though looking forward to Open RCT and Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 um, to stacking the the scenery to make buildings. I think I can really achieve some um, elaborate elaborate things. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, here's another sort of a pleasing aesthetic of mine. Uh, oh no, I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. Normally I put, I, I tend to put like a a, um, a launched looping coaster in. That's also one of my MMOs. Um, all my all my parks. Um, sort of look the same but not quite you, mm, that doesn't really make sense does it <laughs> all of my parks have the same sort of vibe going on which is using making these buildings out of the ground um, you'll quite often get a wooden roller coaster um, definitely um, dueling coasters are, are my thing um and also uh um the uh um <laughs> i've lost all my words <coughs> excuse me the looping coaster the powered the powered launch looping coaster that is also something um that you will find in a lot of my parks um and a lot of trees a lot of tree a lot of foliage Definitely a lot of foliage. I'm even adding some now, I believe. Uh, I'm just trying to add, it looks like I'm trying to add more, more little rise to fill up the area. I do love the um, 3D cinema. I think it looks fantastic. I wish there were, I wish there were just a few more flat rides 
um, in the game. Again, this is why I'm looking forward to open RCT because um, I believe you can download, I don't really know too much about it, um, but you can download more rides, which is just incredible. Because I believe, did not Chris Sawyer make this game in a, a really old coding language or so, something about the coding language which made this um, which made this game quite remarkable that it, that it was made um, I could be wrong again you know this is just the stuff I pass upon on the internet um, oh look I'm, I'm taking away the uh, <laughs> taking away the railings I think I've look yes nice I found a way to get rid of them and that is uh, by changing the paths and it makes the edges disappear fantastic oh I'm changing I'm changing the roof as well yes that's probably a good idea more grassy um yeah I agree with that decision I think I think it was just a bit too much in that corner so now I'm placing so this is the entrance which has looked a bit bare for a, a little while now um and what I've decided to do is create a sort of food, sort of souvenir court, sort of everything court. Um, because this is quite a small park, uh, this will have quite big impact because people will pass through there quite often. Hopefully on not on their way out. Hopefully they're just they just want to head in there. Um, you know to get some food which would be perfect um, and it's all indoors not that the weather matters uh, you know it doesn't bother um, people they, 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 they've all got umbrellas um, I've also made sure I put two kiosks in there kiosks are a really good way of um, helping your guests not get lost um, which they actually they quite frequently do in my parks which is a little bit annoying, a little bit annoying when that incessant messaging keeps popping up that guest 273 can't find the park exit or is lost, you know. Um, so you, I try I try and put uh, quite a few kiosks around just to sort of minimise that because I do, I do know and I'm aware that um, my parks are super busy and um, I mean I would get lost in, in, in my own park to be honest. So here, I, was, I think I was struggling to sort of work out, well, what can I put in this area? And then I thought, hmm, I kind of want to see people milling around in there. So I won't put anything, I won't put anything else really in there. I'll just put some, I, I'll turn it into water um, and then absolutely blast the area with trees. <laughs> Yeah, true to form, true to form. And then what's going on here? Oh yes, I really love the, I really love like paths on top of these on top of these houses. Um, I think they just oh, I don't know they just look they just look really nice, like really nice, like it's like it's some sort of um, some rooftop terrace maybe. That's it. Shove more. Of more trees everywhere make sure no one falls in uh, or crosses boundaries uh, um, into the uh, into the unknown and gets get injured not that they do um, which I think is another thing that maybe could have could have, could have happened like if a roller coaster was too close to a path um, a guest occasionally could stray and uh, get injured by the roller coaster I don't know I don't know these are just slight things I would change if if I were smart enough to make a game like this. So here I am tinkering with names, just trying to come up with something. Again, my names aren't fantastic, but it doesn't have any any effect on anything really, so it doesn't really matter. Put some um, put some mechanics down. Oh, I'm so glad in RCT2 they've they sorted out the uh, mowing issue with the uh, with the handyman. 
Because sometimes, sometimes I wait to the very end when I've when I've completed a park, and then I put down like 50 handymen. 50. 50 is probably a bit too ex uh, um, excessive. Um, or maybe not actually, because Mega Park, Mega Park was huge, um, and I may have put in one go 50 down, and then I have to spend oh, a lot of time sort of getting rid of the the mowing mechanic that they have. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now I'm just I'm just checking everything out, making it I'm sure everything's working. Um, guests are coming in, which is nice. So now it's time to tend to the back of the park, and as you can see, there's not actually much left of the park. Um, I haven't got much room to work with. So what I decided to do was put a massive, <laughs> a massive uh, co uh, um, coaster in with one of my other MMOs, which is this sort of scorpion tail um, element. I'm not sure if it's called, it looks like a scorpion tail, so I'm going to call it a scorpion tail. I don't know the technical term for it. Um, it's quite tight. I'm, I'm, I'm always putting that in. I think it's my favorite element. I just, I just think it looks so pleasing. Um, obviously, I couldn't. Something was going wrong there. I couldn't quite fit something in. So we're going to redo that, but with, uh, one square across. Again, quite a tight space for a big roller coaster. But I think it works out. I think it works out quite well in the end. I think uh, the forbidden diagonal section. Ah! So that's twice, twice in one park of a diagonal section. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Sometimes it is unavoidable. Um, oh, going two different ways as well. Diagonal section going two different ways. Yeah, that must have really, that must have really annoyed me at the time. <laughs> I must have come off this thinking, oh no, what have I done? So it's quite, it's quite a simple roller coaster, really. And um, apologies, gosh, I, I must really stop, it, stop uh, moving the camera around so much. So there we go, makes it round. Easy peasy, and then we just wait for the stats. Excellent. So now that that um, is working fine and it, it's, it's doing everything uh, correctly, let's have a look. Let's see what's going on over here. Um, now it's time to plop it in a building and uh, start theming it. Because this is at the back of the park, um, I can do much bigger structures. Um, sometimes when you do big structures at the front of the park, um, it, it's kind of a little bit overwhelming. I kind of like the 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 gradual sort of um, you start off with low flat rides, and as you get to the back of the park, they get bigger and bigger. Um, uh, the rides and the buildings. Um, again, like I said, this is totally con contradictory to what I've actually done here because I've I put that whopping great big wooden coaster at the front um, and I think what it what it was is I'm sort of I'm sort of not learning but sort of um, understanding what I want my parks to be like so there that is that is why there's an, an anomaly there um, so what I've done here is I have a, a photo um, an online photo section just there, but I want to hide them. See, I think that looks quite good, doesn't it? I don't know why. I always have this. I always have this thing where I really want to hide them. Um, they don't look. They don't look very ugly. I guess. Um, I think what it is is sometimes when I'm making roller coasters, 
if if I have to put a straight a random straight piece in there to make the whole thing fit um, and it's really obvious that that there is a straight piece in there purely to make it fit um, I want to cover that straight piece up and of course the photo bits the the on ride photo section that is a straight bit and I think that's where that comes from. I really want to cover it up because it's just, it's suddenly, suddenly the roller coaster has a random straight bit in it. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't really know why my brain works like that, but you know, there we go. It does. I think the, uh, the black and the green here, it really works well. Um, and of course I'm, I'm always trying to put the roller coaster through buildings to give it a bit more interest. Um, I always add a small building just here where it curves up because it looks it, the way it joins together is a it's a bit strange um, in my mind so I like to cover it up um, it's all about what I quite like to do is I like to look at my parks a lot afterwards and just watch them um, and if there's like something that doesn't look quite right to me it, it, it it kind of gets under my skin a little bit so that's why i'm covering up all these all these um little bits i guess that probably probably doesn't even register with um with anyone else but um it certainly does with me nice bit of water going under there i think there's a good there's a little bit there's quite a bit of water at the back here if i remember correctly um in the end um and I, and I think it, it works quite well. It's kind of it kind of gives it a break, gives the uh, park a break from um, the sheer amount of trees at the front, and then it breaks into water at the back. I think that looks quite good. And if I if I'm correct, I think to the right of the park you can actually buy more land where there is a small pond or a small lake. Um, so that would fit in nicely. Now this. This uh, slide uh, is a little bit contentious because I think people go around and around around that area um, and there's a huge potential that they would get lost uh, because they're not the, the people aren't the smartest unfortunately. Um, so I'm going to try and control them with um, no exit signs. I, I think I think down the line people do get a little bit lost um, back there. Uh, here's another example of me squeezing something in into a, <laughs> a really tight spot. Um, it just so happens it fit there really nicely. So I, really, I, I was really pleased that I could fit that in. I think I think it looks really good there. I think it works really well. <laughs> I'm still adding buildings here, there, and everywhere. Yes, another thing is look look at that entrance. It's it's sort of peeking through the walls. I mean that's a little bit of a shame. I'm sure I'm sure the busier the park gets, the the less I notice it. Um, so here I'm thinking it looks a little flat with the with the slide just there. Um, people are also still going around and around and around, which is a little bit concerning. So that comes to name the roller coaster. We could be here for some time. Let's give it a nice, a nice, uh, a nice paint job. I'm really pleased with how the corkscrew goes over the um, Q line. I think that I think that works really well. Um, successful, co successful coasters in real life. I think when when they um, entwine their um, roller coasters with their Q lines. Um, I think I think that works so so well, and I believe in our Roller Coaster Tycoon two onwards, uh, guests can stand around and look at roller coasters, 
um, and then decide whether they want to get on. I'm not sure if I got that correct because obviously I'm I'm <laughs> I'm still um, in the throes of Rollercoaster Tycoon One at the moment. Uh, very much looking for roller, forward to Rollercoaster Tycoon Two, where they implement all these all these uh, really cool new new features. Um, quite often, I would put I will put these drop towers um, underground. Uh, and I got the idea from one of the scenarios. Uh, I'm trying to think which one it is. It's one of the original scenarios. I think I've already played it. And um, they they put it underground, and I thought, yeah, that looks, yeah, that really works. That looks fantastic. Annoyingly, here, I think I actually forget to connect this path. I'm not sure what happens, but no, no, I've connected it. I think at some point I do get a notification telling me um, that I haven't connected it properly, which is a little bit annoying because the park has remained open for quite some time. Um, so I do wonder if, uh, <laughs> If I didn't quite reach the exit, so people were just falling through the earth into oblivion and disappearing. Here I go, my trees again. And again, I wish, I wish, uh, much like the wooden roller coaster, um, if you place a tree in the support system of the wooden roller coaster, the support sort of go over it um, make uh, you know making it a little bit odd and I kind of wish the game would say no you can't put a tree there because you know they, they prevent you from putting a tree there because um, a roller coaster is there the supports are there but it doesn't and the same happens here with the supports of, of this um, this coaster you can see they they sort of do an L shape over the trees and I kind of wish I can't wish only bushes could go around the supports um, and the game would not let you put a tree there because um, it would mess up the support system. But hey, again, it's just a minor criticism. Um, you know, I wish I was clever enough to, to make a game like this. This is, again, as near perfect a game as you can get, I think, in my eyes. Well, I would say that I'm completely biased. Um, and now I'm going to attempt, I think, to put a river ride <laughs> into what looks like an impossibly tight spot. So, again, I haven't seen this for quite some time, so I can't quite remember how this all came about. But I think... I think I'm gonna. I think this is going the wrong way because I end up going. I end up making the ride, um, but it goes the other way. So I let's see how I get stuck here. Right, you see, you see now that's too much for me. That yeah, I don't. I think I don't like it because there's so much, so much supports in the way that it's blocking the view of people going in. Um, to the other rides. I think it's just, I think it's far too much in the way. Um, and also I'm having trouble, you can plainly see I'm having trouble sort of making things connect. Um, I want to give that splash zone like a longer, a longer run to splash in. It's just, um, yeah, it's just not really happening, is it? I don't think, I don't think it looks very good. I think it looks quite messy in fact. Um, am I going to, Am I going to make that decision before it makes a full circuit? I'm glad it speeded up. Yeah, I didn't, even, I didn't even give it the chance to make a full circuit. So we're going to try again. sort of dodge the uh, yeah dodge the radicate see now 
See now it's getting a little bit convoluted. I, d I don't like it when you can obviously see where you've had to make compromises um, with your ride because it didn't quite fit, you know, it wasn't quite working so you've had to do a weird S-bend to, to sort of dodge things. Now this, this is quite, this is much better. So what I've realised is actually there's no, there's no track going alongside that building so I could actually sneak in uh, the river ride and also it's not too complicated either so this is one of the one of the prime rides that guests complain about because um, they want to get off um, but actually this is short enough um, the lift hill is at the back of the park so it's not it's not um, covering anything uh, particularly not from this view anyway from that, from that nice um, scorpion scorpion tail element And it interacts a little bit with the uh, with the roller coaster, so that's quite nice. I don't really know why I even bothered testing it because obviously you can't get um, a crazy rating, a crazy bad rating with any of the water rides anyway. Um, in between, in between each um, non. Um, commentated video. Um, I do have a bit of time to to look at the park um, when I'm not recording them and sort of make some decisions off screen. Sometimes I will place a ride um, just to see if it would fit and then redo it um, in a similar way um, but recorded. Um, doesn't happen very often sometimes when an area is just a little bit too crazy and you kind of think oh am I gonna waste time sort of filming this and it's not gonna turn out well I better pre put something down just to make sure things can slip through and fit here there and everywhere um, so off screen I've probably made a couple of decisions um, like how I'm gonna house what kind of building I'm gonna I'm gonna put around the um, station, and I think here I've just I've opted to keep it open, um, and I kind of want to join up these canals. Shall we call them canals? I think they're probably canals, aren't they? And I'm probably thinking, yes, let's let's keep this open so we can see the boats and people getting on the boats which I think is a good decision. Again, this is not something I, I do in future. I don't, um, I'm not really one for um, keeping it open, the, the, the stations. I, I'm pr pretty regular um, in putting them in buildings. So this is again, quite unusual. This whole park is a little bit unusual, um, but I think it's because that I'm, again, I'm starting out um, I'm, I'm sort of like finding my feet, finding where, what I want to do, although the rules are already set in place because I've been, these, these fantasy rules of mine, because I've been playing for five years at this point, um, I'm still sort of, sort of realising how things are <laughs> and how I want them to be, if that makes any sense to you at all. So here I'm, I'm actually covering up the um, the lift hill. I imagine maybe some sort of pre-show is going on in there. Um, kind of like the Jurassic World boat ride in Universal Studios. There's, you know, they go up that amazing uh, lift hill. And then here, of course, there's just far too, there's just far too much, far too much, um, uh, support supports from the from the water ride going on um, so I'm using my rock technique just to fill up the area um, I think that works quite well actually um, if this is if, the, if this is a, a 
a park built in the forest, then you would expect to see rocky areas. I wish I wish we had more colours to play with, because then I could I could possibly have made that sort of grey rocks or, or even red. I mean, a nice a nice red texture would would look marvellous on something like this. Almost like Ayers Rock. So here I'm making sort of like a, a contained splash zone, I guess. If that's a thing, is that a thing in theme parts? I'm not sure. Usually there's a bridge, isn't there, that goes over or near the splash zone, which splashes uh, guests, but um, it's just not practical in that area. So now I'm thinking, yes. This has worked out quite well. This is a really nice, compact place um, with some interesting things. Let's let's get let's get all the uh, let's get all the essentials down because it's a, it's a new area, I guess. So you want you want to sort of you want to cater for everyone. Put some toilets down, some food, some drinks, um, and and I do that every time I make a new area. I, I tend to put down the full works for everyone um, and that, that is actually something that is stuck in my head. New area and then put, put all the stuff down um, otherwise you will get people complaining and, and actually um, you, you, I kind of fill up all the, all the spaces and then it becomes a little bit weird trying to fit everything in to accommodate everyone. Oh no, here's the, here's the old changing the mowers and telling them to stop. A few more mechanics of course. And then put a little bit more detail, so I start putting bushes on the rocks. I think that really enhances it. Yeah, really nice. Really, it's a really fun area to sort of stop and um, and sort of stare at and enjoy. So I'm really pleased with it. So here we go with the last little bit, the last little little area. There's not much to uh, there's not much to uh, that can actually fit in there. Um, so I've decided to buy a small little bit of land. And actually, I can't actually remember if I put anything behind here. No, I'm just doing a little bit of landscaping, I think, yes. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's best not to put a ride in, but in fact, um, do a bit of landscaping, you know, just to make everything feel, um, feel like a bit more, uh, you know, give it a bit more character. Um, again, that's a really strange sort of area in between that roller coaster, uh, that loop back there, because, uh, it's a it's a large I think it was a large um, a large curve a super large curve followed by a smaller curve and then a super large curve again that's what it looks like so I've got like an oval shape so there's nothing really I could do there But this works nicely, this works nicely with the water. And of course there's lots of little details. Make sure the water comes up to the correct level. There's just small sort of aesthetic things going on here. Um, I think the, the uh, some of those pathways, they need uh, railings on them, not that people fall in. 
Um, but again, that, that I wish that was a, <laughs> I kind of wish that was a little mechanic that was in the game. You know, if you put a pathway next to water, sometimes someone would fall in um, and drown and ruin your park rating. I think that would be quite, um, quite a cool little mechanic. So now I'm thinking, here, with all this water, why not put some sort of boat ride in? I mean, after all, all these canals are connected. Um, there's a small, like, glitch with um, RCT1, which is uh, if you put one of these boat rides in with, without a track, quite often the boats get stuck trying to come back into the uh, into the station. Um, in fact, it's, it's pretty much guaranteed that, that that will happen, which is a little bit annoying. Um, because sometimes you just want them to free roam, but they just they just can't be trusted, um, which is a massive shame, really. Especially with with uh, the rowing boats. I mean, the rowing boats it, it doesn't it doesn't um, it doesn't really feel right to put them in a in a confined track. So here I'm just trying to squeeze in the. The uh, entrance path to it. It's really getting quite tight there now. I just managed to do it. Not sure where this one's going to end up. The exit path. It's kind of, it's kind of hidden behind everything, and, and there's lots in the way. This quite often happens to me. There we go, I've made it in the end. <coughs> Just adding a few random rocks in the water. It's, it was uh, feeling a little bit flat, I guess. Now I saw this ugly duckling, ugly duckling boat hire. I'm not sure where I got that idea from. I have a feeling it's from one of the um, scenarios. So all all the all the swan boats are white apart from one, which is black. I just thought it was such a cute idea. It, very clever, very clever. I'm really impressed with whoever came up with that. Because of course you know these these these. Um, Boat hires, they're quite they're quite difficult to make interesting. I think there I noticed that they were getting stuck, so I've decided I've decided to extend them uh, extend the track and, and give it a full track going around the uh, <laughs> going around the canals. So now it's actually it's kind of like a tour now. Just making its way round. I don't think I ever check to see if people complain about getting off them because it's too long. I'm not sure. I always like to, yes, turn, turn the track into sort of the same colour as water as well to try and hide it as much as possible. Now we just put in little details here and there. Definitely put the railings on the... Um, um, on the sides, a couple of lily pads. Lily pads, I, I love the lily pads. Um, I'm so glad they're in the game. I think it, I think you can really zhuzh up some boring piece of water. And that's it. That is the time lapse. So I'm going to leave you now with some shots and some statistics.
thank you to everyone who has made it this far and uh, listened to me waffle on about my park. It's not quite over yet, however, because this is a bonus material that um, was not featured in the original time lapses. So what I noticed was there was uh, quite a bit of land that could be um, bought. Um, so this is what I'm doing now. And I'm going to try and uh, fit in a few more rides and a few more coasters um, because it is a, it's quite a small park. Um, and I think it's been such a long time since I made this. I think it's time to have a little bit of an upgrade. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to own all this land here and it's also land to the top right of the map which includes like a tiny little pond um, which I'm going to also I'm going to also build um, a substantial coaster on so the first thing to do is obviously to clear all the trees um, all those lovely trees that I've put down and I'm going to Amazingly, I'm going to sneak in, sneak in, squeeze in two power, two launched looping coasters dueling into this tight spot. So the the first one I'm putting in entrance is entrance will have a very small queue uh, which goes onto the pathway, um, and the exit goes straight onto the main pathway. Um, and the second um, dueling coaster, both the entrance and the exit are going to go straight onto the main pathway. So people, there's no queue line, people will just walk straight on, um, which is, it's not ideal, but it still works. It still works. It's still, it will still fill up the um, entire train, um, no problem at all. I'm all. I've also put some photo... Um, on-ride photo elements um, onto them as well because they're they're quite a good money spinner and people people really do seem to enjoy them so there was a small problem with this ride which is that first hump uh, when I come to test it that first hump is just a bit too steep and the train can't make it back but I don't realize that just yet I thought when I initially uh, witnessed it coming back um, and not making it, I thought, oh my gosh, I've really messed up here. Um, but I do come up with a fix for it. So there, there's an entrance and exit that goes straight onto the main path. And um, for the first time in the park, I'm actually adding flowers. It's a shame they're slightly higher up because the handymen can't actually reach them to water them. Um, but it's okay because I have a trainer and the trainer um, allows me to uh, water the plants. Um, oh, it's on a timer basically and I can water the plants. I'm just going to put an, uh, an Enterprise ride in and then sneak the queue around the back. It was pretty much, pretty much made for that area. I think it's really a really nice fit. So here we go. I put the plants in all around the uh, the launch um, exit. Um, I'm not sure why I haven't actually added plants to this park before. I think I think it really works. Hmm. Never mind. So here, I'm adding a viewpoint. Um, and these so far everything everything is kind of old traditional rides traditional i mean looping coaster and uh yeah i suppose the looping coasters and the enterprise i suppose um they are old school now they're quite old rides aren't they so we're kind of ke uh, keeping it fitting with um forest frontiers i suppose the the most modern ride in the park at the moment um is the the big one at the back so here, here's where I realise, oh damn, it doesn't quite go over. And actually I'm going at my top speed. So I have to make some modifications. At first I thought I could add a slope, a gentle slope here with a lift, a chain hill um, that would take it higher, but I, I wasn't sure if that would work and, and I, didn't like, I didn't like the way it looked anyway, so I, I abandoned that. So what I ended up doing was making this like top hat. Um, 
which is probably the com completely the wrong terminology for what it is. It's more it's more of a humpback hill, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's much better. Humpback hill that goes over the entrance, um, and we're gonna I'm giving him sort of um, autumnal um, colours, and then I, I kind of feel quite happy about that now. Um, so then we move on to the back, and there's quite a, quite a lot of land I need to buy. Um, but I, I make um, quite um, easy work of this. Now, sometimes in these scenarios, when I've come to own land, um, the developers have accidentally left a square out. So there'll be like a random single square that you can't own, sort of right smack bang in the middle, kind of in the middle of everything. So I was, I was really pleased that um, I was able to own the lot without any sort of weird complications. Um, I'm even I'm even getting rid of the sides here because I need to get a path uh, going round to the new section. Um, so there will be a pathway um, here, and then I'll have to somehow put a pathway in um, going into the other section of the park. Um, there's a lot of tree clearing. Uh, in, R in, in RCT2, I believe, maybe open RCT, I think you can clear large areas of land with a, with the bulldoze tool. Or am I thinking of a different game? I'm not sure. Um, so here I'm putting the path in. I've connected to this, this uh, section of the park. And actually, I think it works quite well. So hopefully guests won't uh, won't get lost, um, and uh, it, it'll be it'll be quite easy pathfinding for them. I have just removed the spiral slide from that area because um, it, people were literally just going around in circles there. Um, so I decided to to sort of rework it, and I think I can solve it. Um, so there's there's absolutely no loops, and again I've put flowers in. Um, these ones can be reached apart from <laughs> apart from this L section at the back, which can't be. But again, I've got the trainer. The trainer will automatically water them, which will be great. And I've put a lower building in there so we can just see what everyone's up to behind there. Um, there's nothing worse than having things obstructed, so you can't watch what people are getting up to. Um, so now we start clearing all these trees. And there's a fair few of them. This is where that uh, that tool I mentioned would come in handy. So I can just clear all this uh, lickety split. We've even got some theming at the back here. I don't think we're going to use this uh, pond for anything. <coughs> so that, that will probably end up going. Um, I can't remember if I left a little bit of it in. So this is the swinging coaster. I quite like the uh, swinging coaster. Um, it's quite a hard one to master. It's a quite hard one to um, to make work. It's uh, um, you you can quite easily go overboard and uh, either make people nauseous or, or make the whole the whole ride extreme, uh, which is obviously um, not very good. So this, this will feature quite a few um, helixes. I mean, that's basically what this roller coaster was built for, um, to get those, to get the cars swinging. Um, having a little trouble here, because I, I wanted it to start off with a gentle helix. And I'm sure I managed to do that in a previous coaster, but it doesn't seem to want to do it here. So instead, we're just meandering around. I'm creating a sort of a sort of temple, I guess, a sort of um, a strange building for it to meander in and out of. <clears throat> I mean, it doesn't really make much sense, but um, I just want it to be sort of a, a fast, uh, very swingy, very lots of lots of turns, lots of um, um, lots of helixes, um, kind of um, compact coaster. Uh, going back and forth. Again, there's a long straight bit there. Um, I always put the straight bits in buildings because I just think it's a, it's a bit odd. 
having a random straight bit that isn't a, bl a block break. Um, you can't actually use block breaks um, in RCT1 as you can in RCT2. You know, have two two on the track and one waiting on the block breaks section. I think that's how it works um, because that mechanic hasn't been put in yet. Um, so now I'm just trying to get the track back into the station, which is a little bit tricky. We have this mountain here, this little, well, this little hill rather, it's not a mountain, um, that we have to sort of force the coaster through. And then I was thinking maybe we can come to the, to the front here, just so people can, can sort of see a little bit of the coaster. Um, although it has no effect on anyone, um, I think, uh, until you load it into RCT2, I guess, um, I still think it looks quite good to have a, a little bit of the coaster in the front um, and not have this mysterious um, sort of entrance at the beginning. So again, I'm having a little bit of trouble trying to work out how to get this up here. But then all of a sudden, it just fits like so. <coughs> really pleased with that. So I'm trying to get the path to go around the, um, the last helix, but it's a little bit tricky. So I've got to go up into the water um, and build up some land outside, which it doesn't really matter too much. So before I do any more work on it, I've got to test it. Sometimes when I'm testing, after I've after I've built a um, a really big roller coaster, sometimes it's very rare, but sometimes it becomes ultra extreme, and uh, I have to delete the whole thing because there's no rectifying it, which is an absolute nightmare. But most of the time, I'm very lucky, and. Um, the, the, the stats are perfectly acceptable, like it is on this one. You know, these are quite hard to judge um, how intense everything is, or, or if it's even going to make it around uh, the track. So now I'm just cleaning, cleaning everything up, giving everything a roof, um, just adding little, little, little details here and there. Um, obviously, this is going to be the um, uh, the most important part. It's quite a big station. But it just it just fits so well, it just fits so well. So here is a great example of me having an idea and then not really knowing <laughs> not really knowing where to go with it. So um, we've got like an odd queue line that sort of it doubles back on itself almost and goes to the back of the path, which isn't really great for getting people in. Um, people want to people don't want to walk down dead end paths to get into something. So at some point that does get changed and I bring the path forward a bit more. <clears throat> a little bit more, a little bit more groundwork. Again, there's that tiny little bit of straight that um, I want to get rid of. Otherwise my brain will explode quite clearly. just uh, finishing touches on the ground right before I start um, adding anything else. At this point I'm thinking let's continue the water theme that's going on so we need so we would have a little uh, a little bit of water here there's obviously Obviously, I've got rid of some at the back. 
So here I've decided, do you know what, there's, some, there's still some room at the very, very back. And this will be perfect for one of these. And that will probably, probably, that is probably the most um, up-to-date roller coaster here in terms of technology. Um, we've gone from quite a traditional kind of park and now we're really, um, you know, we're really getting into the new tech. Um, and, it, and it's starting to feel a lot different at the back there. Um, and just to finish things off, I'm actually going to squeeze in a vertical drop roller coaster. Um, which kind of, looking at it now, kind of seems impossible. I'm not sure how I'm going to fit it in. Um, it's been a little while since I built this and I can't quite remember the ins and outs of it. So it looks like it might be a slight struggle. But I found a clear path. I really love uh, vertical drop roller coasters um, in RCT because um, you can actually get away with quite a quite a thin footprint thanks to these immense drops. So you don't actually need much to um, of a of a uh, vertical drop roller coaster to get all the guests enthusiastic about it. You could actually have quite short rides, um, and that's why I really love them. And aesthetically, they look very pleasing, like some sort of some sort of um, crazy dipping snake. Really lovely. Here it gets a bit convoluted around this turn because I've gone I've gone through a very tight spot and I've had to do some weird. Um, weird track pieces so there's it goes from vertical uh, to steep and then uh, two gentle slopes and then into a curve so it's a little bit convoluted it's not quite if I, if I don't think about it I, it doesn't bother me but when I when I think about it um, <laughs> it does but luckily when I when I watch these back um, I'm obviously not watching from an underground view that's why they're hidden, um, to stop me basically from feeling like the whole ride is crap, basically. Um, oh, I do love a good vertical climb. And then here again, we're having slight problems. I feel like I'm quite close to finishing, but I can't quite get past the coasters. So I do this almighty final uh, vertical drop, and then it's a straight line all the way back to the station. I think it works really, really well. If I can just get it out of the hole. <laughs> and it's definitely important to put some brakes there um, because that, that tight curve at the end that could really um, heighten the, uh, um, the intensity meter so fingers crossed this all works out which it does I think we end up at a high or very high. So now we've got to sort of integrate both coasters into the same building. Doesn't quite doesn't quite work so now I've got to put everything back. And again here, um, around this sort of complicated area, uh, it's good just to put rock work, just to like cover things up. Um, 
I, I think I think again that really works. That right, that also um, pulls in from um, the rock work at the fronts and the sides, um, and, and really makes the, uh, the uh, like a cohesive park. So this isn't such a separate area. So I've gone for the brickwork and the um, terracotta tiles. A little bit more stonework or mudwork, whatever you want to call it. Now here I decided to cover the uh, slope up, which I think really works because uh, Otherwise, it's just this random, well, it's not random hole, it's, it's, it's a purposeful hole, but to me, whenever I see um, something straight up dug out of the, out of the ground, um, I always, always want more from it. So I gave it a little bit of a canopy there with the paths. Little fencing work around the paths on the uh, roofs, just to give it a bit of depth. This is always a sort of frustrating bit, but it's, it's totally worth it. I think they work really, really well. Again, color changing. I mean, I could spend I could spend a long time color changing. Um, the, I think I've left it on the at the uh, the colors of Oblivion at Alton Towers uh, in the UK, um, which is a, a black track um, with orange seats. I think that's what I left it at. Um, so just put it in the uh, ride entrance and exit. Uh, the exit unfortunately had to cross over so the exit is actually a little bit further away from the entrance that I would like it to be um, and that's because you know people they they leave a ride and then they go go straight back round um, and queue up again um, so we've got to get the peeps over there over to the other side so a little nice little bridge and then we put a roof on the station. I mean, it's a little bit, it's a little bit frustrating having to pluck all these uh, um, bits of land up. Um, it does take a while, um, and and you can feel yourself sort of losing the will to live sometimes um, because there are so many to do. Um, especially when you have to go around the edge um, with um, fencing like I do here. Put some fencing along the edges here so no one falls in. All the way along. And now I guess the only thing left is to uh, do some theming get some I haven't actually got my trees out yet so there's a quite a lot of there's quite a lot of area here this is going to take a little while for me to fill up everything and as you can see there's lots of messages saying uh, you can't place that here you can't place that there that's because I'm clicking furiously trying to fit trees in here there and everywhere I think it works. I think the crowded tree look looks it works quite well at the back here, because there's no paths and it's just um, a, 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 like a um, a mess of coaster tracks. Uh, I think it really works. So it, as if the coasters are going through um, like a forest, which which is exactly what they're doing. This is Forest Frontiers after all. Lots of bushes on on the uh, rock work there. A couple of trees. So 
So now I've decided to use some some temple, some jungle bushes, or as I like to call them, temple bushes, because they just they just work well with this kind of temple look. Lots of bushes on the rock work. Get all the path edging in. And of course, this is a new area. So I'm adding all the amenities that people would want. So we've got toilets, kiosks, uh, balloons, um, I'm sure there'll be food and drink, yep, coffee. The more I play Relicus Tycoon, the more and more I really love the coffee stand. I think it's a really beautiful object. Underrated, underrated. So now I'm just put in finishing touches on to see if I can notice anything that needs a little bit of attention see some of those some of those supports disappeared which I didn't like so now of course at the front there's a couple of a couple of issues I thought maybe I could sneak a uh, a path going into the middle there but unfortunately it just wasn't meant to be it's uh, too compact. And now I'll just fill up the front of trees. And voila, we are there.